So, we're at the airport on our way to visit the in-laws, but the two-year-old is losing her shit. She is screaming at the top of her lungs, No way, play! No way, play! As we board the plane and take our seats at the bulkhead. Passengers are filing past us with varying looks of pity and horror, but mostly relief that they're not sitting next to the kid who's screaming like a mongoose that's been stabbed with a roasty oh. steak knife. My husband's response is to rub her back and say, It's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay, it's gonna be okay. And since that's only slightly less annoying than the screaming, I take control of the situation by ransacking the diaper bag in hopes of finding something that will stop the infernal sound that's coming out of her face hole. Binky? Cookie? Coloring book? Super plus tampon hanging out of a torn wrapper? Nothing works. I rifle through the seat back pocket and I pull out the emergency card and I say, look at the funny pictures, baby. But she doesn't find the picture so funny. In fact, she grabs the card and flings it and the tampon onto the lap of a businessman who's sitting two rows back. Sorry, sir. Konnichiwa. As a last ditch effort, I reach my hand into the wall pocket and I pull out the air sickness bag and I scrawl a face on it and stick my hand inside and I say the funniest thing I can think of. Ooga booga. The child stops screaming. She smiles, then she giggles. I really should write a parenting column. With helpful advice, like changing the world one diaper at a time. Smell that, that's a Pulitzer! The child, who's now human again, interrupts my fantasy publishing life. Mo papa, mama. I think to myself, oh, one puppet, that's fine, but two puppets? Now that's a show. I reach into my husband's wall pocket and I take out his air sickness bag. I draw another face on it. I give it curly hair and glasses. I know, nice touch. And then I stick my hand inside and then my world contracts because it seems this air sickness bag has been used before. But not for a puppet show. Nope. No, it's been used for the purpose that God intended. My husband looks at me, understanding immediately what has happened, and he is horrified. So I think I see a faint smile creep across his face. After deciding to divorce him the moment we touch down, I turn to the matter at hand. On hand. It's on my hand. You'd think that having a child has prepared you for the bodily functions of humanity until you find yourself wearing a glove made of the puke of a stranger. I spring out of my seat, afflicted hand still in bag, and I claw my way past passengers still trying to stuff their carry-ons into the overhead bins. I want to leapfrog over them, crawl between their legs, anything to get to that lavatory. Finally, I slam the door behind me and pull my hand out of the bag. It is covered in a substance that is wet, viscous, beigey, and interspersed with flecks of something, honey roasted peanuts, I suppose. As I wash my hand in water hot enough to scald, I take a moment to marvel at what has just happened. Roughly two million people fly the American skies every day. How many of those travelers ever actually use an air sickness bag? And of those phantom pukers, how many would choose to tuck the vomit-filled vessel back into the seat pocket? And what's the probability that a cleaning crew would overlook this sack of sick, huh? Finally, what are the odds that all of this would become the perfect setup for one arrogant moron who tries to make a hand puppet out of a barf bag? Fuck me! Sorry. As the please take your seats bell dings, I hurry back to my seat where the child is now napping and clutching the puke-free puke bag to her chest like a teddy bear. As I watch her sleep, my anger deflates. I can't condemn this barfing bandit whose moment of lapsed judgment has made my list of life's most disgusting moments. All I can do is chalk this one up to experience. Parenthood, I'm learning, is a minefield of unpredictability. Sometimes the minds are made of tears, and sometimes they're made of undigested food.